Although forks steer a failures can occur, such failures are thankfully rare. However, obviously, when they do, the consequences can be very serious. Because of the serious nature of this subject, I will not restrict myself to my self-imposed five-minute video limit. I haven't come across the issue I'll be discussing with steel or aluminium alloy steerers, so in this video the discussion will be limited to carbon fibre steerers. Damage like this on carbon fibre fork steerers is being reported more and more often. In this video I'll look at this issue by reference to an example of fork steerer damage that one of my cycling friends found on a set of his forks. He wanted to know if the forks were safe to carry on using or if he should replace them. The damage that I'll be discussing can be found in here. It's associated with the top headset bearing collar. The damage is located where the collar clamps onto the steerer and is sometimes referred to as bark ringing. I will simply call it ringing. Lucia Technic has called the damage perhaps with some justification, rings of death. Failures can start at design or manufacturing flaws, and the best thing you can do is to avoid them. YouTube channels like Lucia Technic, and there's a link in the description, can be useful in helping you avoid these issues. But in general, avoid steerers with more complicated shapes and forks that claim to be lightweight. In this video I'll be looking at the ringing, which is a form of in-service degradation. In extreme circumstances, the ringing could cause the fork steerer to crack like this, which is obviously not far from catastrophic failure. I have, myself, been subject to a fork recall. The recall reason was not divulged, but I suspect it was due to ringing. It's therefore a good idea to periodically check your carbon fibre fork steerers. In this video, I'll look at the top headset region of the steerer only. However, while inspecting this region, it's worthwhile looking at the rest of the fork too. I'll be using only materials, tools and techniques that most people can use at home. Some reading glasses, as my eyesight's not too great. A watchmaker's loop, so I can look close up. And some very fine emery paper. I'm using a 2000 grit grade. However, if you don't feel confident, or if you have any doubts about what you're seeing, seek professional help. The first step is to remove the forks from the bike, and if necessary, clean them. I won't cover this in this video. My friend had already removed his forks and brought them to me. Those are the forks I'll be showing in the example. But first, let's talk a bit about ringing, what it is and why it occurs. Most modern bikes will have a headset bearing collar that looks a bit like this. It fits around the steerer between the stem and the top headset bearing. The taper that you can see engages with the taper on the bearing when not assembled into the headset, like this one, it's slightly loose on the steerer. Also note it has a split in it. As the stem top cap is tightened, the taper and the split allow the collar to be tightened and grip the steerer. Hence tightening the stem down not only preloads the bearing, but also takes up the clearance between the steering column and the headset bearing collar. The steerer damage occurs because it's much softer than the collar. When tightening the top cap preload bolt, you're unlikely to crush the carbon fibre matrix unless you're very ham-fisted, because basic engineering calculations would show the axial force on the bearings would need to be about 4.5 tonnes. This equates to about 27 newton metres of torque on a typical top cap bolt. My own experiments would suggest the top cap bolt needs to be done up to about 5 newton meters, and if it needs to be more than 10 newton meters, there's something seriously wrong. I'm convinced that my friend was careful about tightening his headset, possibly too careful. As for the damaged on fork steerers on internet photos, I can't speak for them. But the damage on my friend's fork steerer is almost certainly due to abrasive wear caused by movement between the parts. Visual inspection suggests it's wear, 
There's also some telltale debris left on the headset bearing collar. In addition, some of the anodizing on the collar has worn off, which indicates that there's also been some wear between the collar and the bearing. Now, when the parts start to wear, the grip of the collar on the steerer will reduce, allowing even more movement and hence more wear. The wear is therefore self-reinforcing and will accumulate over time. This possibly accounts for some of the severe damage I've seen on some internet photos. OK then, let's look at my friend Steerer in more detail. The ringing damaged location and size match the bearing collar, confirming it was that that caused the damage. In this case, the ringing damage was shallow, only about 0.01 mm deep. As the Steerer is not quite round, the wear is not even around the circumference. Lucia Technic and other sources on the internet have shown examples of ringing wear that is much, much deeper and much more severe. I don't have a rule on how deep is too deep for ringing wear, but this is the way I assessed my friend's steerer. Remember, his steerer only had very shallow ringing. Without doing anything to the steerer, I used a watchmaker's loop to examine the damage. I looked for signs of cracked resin matrix and broken fibers, particularly at the edges of the ringing. But I couldn't see any such damage, so I moved on to look deeper into the steerer material. I did this very carefully by abrading the ringing region with my 2000 grit emery paper, which I used wet. I used light strokes so as not to induce any damage by this process. I removed just enough material so that the ringing was no longer visible. After the abrasion, this is what the surface looked like. Again I inspected the surface with the loop, looking for cracks and broken fibres. I couldn't see any of this type of damage. Also, as best I could, I looked and felt inside the steerer for signs of internal damage in the region of the ringing. In the case of my friend's fork, I concluded I have no reason to believe that this fork had been compromised by the ringing. We agreed that he could continue to use the forks. However, he thought more regular inspections should be carried out, and I agreed. After my friend described how he adjusted the headset, I suggested that he put an extra preload on. He described how he tightened the steerer top cap bolt just enough to remove any movement from the headset system. He did not really apply a preload as I described in the video I reference above. I suggested that his technique would not cause the bearing collar to clamp onto the steerer and hence, because the headset bearings have a finite rotational resistance, the steerer could be turning inside the collar rather than the bearings rotating. This could cause the ringing. I suggested that he preload his headset bearings, which will cause the collar to clamp to the steerer and prevent movement and therefore eliminate the ringing wear caused by gross movement. However, it's still possible that ringing wear could be caused by microscopic movements induced by vibration. shunting of the collar caused by braking forces, and differential thermal expansion, so my advice won't necessarily eliminate all ringing wear. However, applying the headset preload should eliminate the main mechanism. But don't forget, if ringing does occur, it will loosen the collar on the steerer, which could then lead to more ringing wear, unless, of course, you periodically re-preload the headset. We also discussed that he could apply some extra security by fitting an extra long fork expander like this one. The expander would need to extend below the upper headset bearing. The longer expander should stop the handlebars coming off should the steerer crack. In addition, it will also strengthen the steerer and therefore make the steerer less likely to crack. A longer steerer expander was one of the mitigations applied in my own fork recall. 
My friend bought a 90mm long expander and fitted it. I fitted a similar one to my gravel bike too. A well-worn, if you'll excuse the pun, engineering approach to reducing contact stresses and hence contact damage is to use a compliant interlayer between the parts. We can exploit this in order to prevent ringing. Now, a compliant interlayer sounds technical, but it doesn't have to be. Most household sticky tape should do the job. I did suggest to my friend that he use PTFE plumber's tape because it's quite thin and by using multiple layers you can control the thickness. It's also waterproof and very hard wearing. And he applied some of this. He offered to take the forks apart in order to see how it was standing up in use. The video you can see now is the forks with the tape on. We have a short discussion about that tape. It was around here, wasn't it? The no, I think I think the actual wear is is here. Okay, all right. It's from so the, I there. the collar was a bit higher up, but well, what I can do is take the tape off because I can renew it. Yeah. So we can see exactly what the problem was is and see if any additional wear has taken place. Right. So all that I'm unwound in at the moment, the tape hasn't been compromised. The early signs are that wrapping the steerer with plumber's tape has inhibited ringing. I've shown that a properly adjusted and preloaded headset is key to the prevention of most ringing damage. There are a couple of pitfalls that may prevent you applying the correct amount of preload. The first is to make sure that the stem top cap doesn't foul on the top of the fork expander. Obviously, if it does, you'll just tighten the top cap onto the expander. Make sure there's adequate clearance, like this. Secondly, and this is sort of related, make sure the expander is done up tight enough so that when you tighten the top cap, it doesn't slip in the forks. Again, if this happens, you'll just tighten the top cap onto the steerer expander. Finally, it's worthwhile checking for sharp edges on the bearing collar. Sharp edges will increase the stress concentration and potentially lead to more damage in the carbon fibre. The edges should have chamfers or preferably small radii. As you can see on my friend's collar here, it has a small chamfer. However, the edges on the split in the collar are sharp. So, as you can see here, I just used a small file to blunt those edges. If there are other sharp edges, it's worthwhile making sure they're slightly rounded. When choosing a new set of forks, or even a whole new bike, first of all, get yourself educated. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that cover engineering issues. Secondly, try to avoid forks with complex shapes, particularly those with cutouts. And lastly, and maybe it goes without saying, avoid very lightweight forks as the factor of safety on those is bound to be lower. From time to time, check your headset adjustment and if necessary, adjust it properly. I'll reference a video in the description that shows you how to do this. But in simple terms, first remove any backlash or free play. Then add a preload onto the headset bearings. Finally, I would recommend if you've got a carbon fork steerer, Use a torque wrench to tighten your headset and the stem bolts. After you've had your forks for a while, it makes sense to check them. In particular, look for this ringing damage. However, while you're at it, why not inspect the rest of the fork? The inspection and interpretation of what you see on those fork steerers is not necessarily easy. So if you're in doubt, get it checked by a professional. Finally, if you want to be a bit more proactive and add some extra security, fit an extra long steerer expander. Also, as I described in this video, applying an interlayer between the steerer and the collar can help prevent ringing damage. Finally, remember, fork steerer failure is very rare, so don't get paranoid. However, do get educated, do take steps, and do be careful. That way, even if these steps don't improve your fork steerer reliability, they might put your mind at rest. Which is a good thing, 
and you can get on and enjoy your riding. Although this video is quite short, it actually took a long time to make. So if you could show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up, that would be very helpful. Also, in the unlikely event that you want to see more of these low rent videos about cycling in mostly five minutes or less, please subscribe. Finally, feel free to comment about this video and tell me about any problems you've had with fork steerers. From me, for now, it's goodbye.